thought I bowed down before you I was lost in despair but nobody knew cause I smiled through it all <laughs> and I constantly prayed to you I needed a kind word a smile on Somebody loved me Cause I felt so all alone But lo and behold In the midst of it all In the midst of it all You encouraged my soul Yeah, you did So I won't let go I won't let go I'll just keep I'll just keep what your word did. Your word encouraged me. I'll just keep holding on. So I stayed, Lord, in your presence. Cause I believed you would hear me. But I didn't know you were all Once again, I regained hope in the middle of it all. Right in the midst of it all. You Chained in hand, in 
blessings and favor to all of you God's children. Bless God for you being here with us today. I am your pastor, of course, Nakia McKay, and I'm so grateful to God that you have taken out time to be here with us today for our midweek Bible study. Amen. I pray that you all have been experiencing nothing but God's best and blessings and favor up on your lives thus far this week. Amen. And and I'm so glad that uh, so glad that you've decided to tune in with us today. Amen. But will you do me a favor? Will you help me share this gospel by you sharing this page, inviting your family and friends to come on and be a part of us? Uh, start watch parties, share, call, text, do whatever you can. Let's get as many people as we can to be a part of this uh, Bible study uh, on tonight. Amen. God bless your hearts. And again, thank you so much for being here today. Um, it's always a privilege and an honor of mine to be able to share in the Word of God with you all. Amen. And I'm so grateful uh, for this blessed opportunity. But let's go ahead and get our Bibles. Get whatever you have the Word of God on. Grab yourself uh, something to take some notes with, to write with, uh, whatever. Um, and, and, and let's go to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, verses 9 through 13. Do I have any blessed people on here with me today? If I do, let me see you type down in that box. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am blessed. Even if you don't feel like you're blessed, type down in that box. I am blessed. And know that you are blessed of the Lord. Declare it over yourself. I am blessed. In spite of what I may be going through, in spite of how I may be feeling, I am blessed. Amen. Amen. God bless your hearts again. Matthew chapter 14, verses 9 through 13. And the word of the Lord says, And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oak's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it be, to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel. And she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by a ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. I want to talk to us tonight a topic that was presented to me the other day. I want to talk about dealing with grief. Dealing with grief. This was something that was presented to me the other week while I was uh, at our outreach event that we have uh, in Hammond. And one of, the, one of my mothers, one of my mamas in the church, she said to me, she said, Pastor, you know, nobody speaks about, or rather I haven't heard anybody speak about how to deal with grief. She said, nobody speaks about it. And that that's that 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 has that had been in my in my in my spirit, you know, when she said that. And and just a week later, another one of my members, another one of my sisters in the church, she was at church. She was texting her sister about coming to church. And when we got out of church, she found out that her sister was getting ready to come to church and had a heart attack and died. And the Lord made me remember after I heard that about my sister and her sister. The Lord made me remember the conversation 
that I had with my other, with one of my mamas in the church about people needing to hear and know how to deal with grief. That made me think about that even the more, how important it is for us to know how to manage and to come through those tough times of grief because it's hard. Dealing with grief, it is hard. I know a lot of us have experienced grief before. But if you haven't, as the seasoned people would say, just keep living. Just keep living. One day you will. And we need to know how to deal with, we need to know how to deal with grief. And, and, and deal with it in a real way, people of God. Deal with it and, and be truthful and honest about it. That is hard. It's difficult. It's a difficult thing to deal with. It's a difficult, you know, thing, or emotion, or feeling to, 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 to cope with. It is hard. Grief is defined as a deep sadness, a deep sadness that's, that's caused by a loss. Grief is a sadness as a, re, as a result of, of losing something and losing something or or someone that you care for. It's hard. And what I what I've what I've come to, to to realize is that most most of the time when people uh you know talk about grief or or people deal with grief, it's coming from you know, them experiencing the loss of a loved one. Someone has, someone has died. Someone has transitioned and they're no longer here. But I've learned, people of God, that grief can be caused by any type of loss. Grief can be caused by any type of love. Grief is not just a deep sadness that's experienced by the loss of a loved one. But the loss of your joy can cause you grief. The loss of your peace can cause you grief. The loss of your marriage or relationship or friendship can cause you grief. The loss of a job can cause you grief. The loss of, of your home or your car can cause you grief. Grief can be caused by anything that makes you experience some type of love, loss, especially if it's something that, that you've cared about, something that you know you had deep feelings for. In this text. John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, the Bible says was beheaded by King Herod. And John's disciples went and got his body, buried him, and they went and told Jesus what happened. And when Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote place to be alone. I believe Jesus was experiencing a moment of grief. I believe he was experiencing a moment of grief. His humanity side was grieving the loss of John, his cousin. And maybe that's just me. Maybe I see that because I know I experienced loss. Y you know, I, 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 I would experience grief. 
you know, God forbid, one of my one of my cousins, or, or, or you know, sisters or brothers would you know would die? I, I would I would have a, I would have a moment of grief. Maybe that's what I see, but I believe in this text, this moment, Jesus was experiencing grief. Because his cousin was just beheaded, and he was died, and he died. He's dead. And when Jesus heard the news, the Bible says that he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. Now. This is what I believe some things that we need or things you need to know how to do or what you should do to deal and cope with grief. This is what I believe that can help us. The first thing is, I believe you need to take time for yourself. Sometimes, people of God, when you're dealing with grief, you don't need to be around everybody. Everybody doesn't need to be around you. Sometimes you just need to take some time for yourself. Sometimes you need to take some time for yourself. Man, when when you're grieving, everybody doesn't grieve the same way. You know, and sometimes I think the best way for you to, to really get it out, man, is to be by yourself. You need to take time, take some time for yourself. This is what, this is what the Bible said Jesus did. He left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. To deal with growth, to uh, to to deal with grief, to cope with grief, sometimes you need to take time for yourself. And I read this one quote that says, "Never feel guilty if you need to take some time for yourself." Don't feel guilty if you need to be around. If you need to be by yourself, not be around everybody else, because sometimes being by yourself. That could be your best, uh, that could be your best self-help when you're by yourself. It could be your best self-help. When you're dealing with grief, sometimes you need to take time for yourself. And it doesn't matter how spiritual you think you are. Maybe you are that spiritual. Doesn't matter how strong you think you are. Maybe you are that strong. Doesn't matter what you've done before, uh, you know. Maybe you did do some 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 wonderful things, you know. Doesn't matter what you think you know, or maybe you do know a lot. When you're dealing with grief, sometimes you just need to take some time, man. Sometimes you just need to take some time to yourself, you know. And 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 don't feel guilty about it. I know people may be trying to comfort you, or, or you know, some people may be trying to, you know, uh, uh, let you know that. That they're with you, that you know, that they're to help you. That's all fine and dandy. That's well and dandy. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I love you. I appreciate it. Man, but just give me, give me some time by myself. Just give me some time by myself. And understand that when you take some time by yourself, doesn't mean that you're giving up. Doesn't mean that you're throwing in the towel. Doesn't mean that you don't have faith. Doesn't mean that you don't trust God. It just means that I just need some time by myself right now. I just need some time for myself right now. When Jesus heard this news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. He went to be by himself because sometimes there's some things that need to be handled just between you and God. 
some things that, you know, just need to be handled between, between you and God. And, 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 and I don't need everybody around me. I don't need, you know, everybody around me when, when, when God is trying to work with me, when God is, is trying to deal with me. There's some things, man, that what I'm dealing with, it requires some alone time with God. It requires a long time. It requires, you know, uh, 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 a supernatural touch from God. And, and, and I appreciate you, but, but this here thing, man, only God can get me through this. And I just need to take a moment. I just need some time by myself. If you're grieving, do you have grief in your life? You're dealing with some grief? I mean, take some time to yourself. Take some time to yourself. And when you take that time by yourself, make sure you take time to pray. Take time to pray. When things in life happen, when things happen in your life, you need to make sure you find your way into your prayer closet. I know it may be difficult. I know it may be hard. But that's when you need to pray even the more. Because I've learned that prayer is the only thing that can get you through anything. Prayer is the only thing that can get you through anything. Because there's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. That's why Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16, Paul says, pray without ceasing. We need to be praying and don't ever stop praying. Because prayer is the only thing <laughs> that can help us through anything. There's power in prayer. Jesus, when he was going through his weak moment, about to go to that cross, the Bible says he went and he prayed. Three times. And prayed so hard like it was, <laughs> you know, he praying so hard, like like the sweat, you know, was dropping from his head. He was praying hard. But then the Bible says that when he prayed, God sent down, sent an angel down. Strengthen him to help him do what he needed to do, to help him get over that anxiety that he was dealing with. And that's the same thing that God can do for you in your moment of grief. In your time of grief, dealing with loss, take time to pray because God will strengthen you. God will strengthen you and help you get through this time. God will strengthen you. Jesus heard the news, got in the boat to go be by himself in a remote area alone. I believe he went there so that he can pray. He took time for himself. I believe he went there so he can pray. And not only did he go there to pray, but I believe you need to take time to process. 
take time to process what you're going through, what you what what you're dealing with. You need to process what's happening. Because I believe when you take a minute to process it, you'll see that no matter what happens, no matter what goes on in life, God is still a good God. God is still a good God. God is still in control. And he's still, he's still God. He's still God. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But if you take a moment just to process it and see that this is all God's, this is all God's doing. Everything happens according to God's plan. Everything happens according to his plan. In Job chapter 1, verses 20 through 22, says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. Thither the Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. After all of the devastation that Job had just went through, the loss that he had just experienced with his kids, his family, with his, with his property, with his assets, Job had a lot to grieve for. He was going through a lot. But he took a minute to process it. And gain a perspective about what happened. Job said, Lord, I came in this world with nothing. And I'm going to leave with nothing. Everything I have, you gave it. And it's your right to take it away. Help me here, Holy Ghost. He said, I came here with nothing, God. And I'm going to leave with nothing. Everything I have, you gave it to me. It's yours. It's your right to take it away from me. When you put things in perspective, you see people of God that no matter what happens to me or no matter what goes on in my life, God is still in control. God, you're still God. You're still Alpha and Omega. God, you're still sitting high up on the throne. You're still looking low. Good God, help me today. Jesus. Process it, people of God. Understand that God is still the same God that he was yesterday, today, and forevermore. That he does not change. He's the same God. He's the same God to help you deal with the grief you dealt with last year, the year before last, five years ago, ten years ago. He's the same God who brought you through that, who's going to bring you through this, and he's going to bring you through the next time. Take some time to process it, people of God. Because when you do, I believe, I believe we'll be like Job here. And we'll come to realize that God Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, Lord. Take time to process what it is that you that you're dealing with. Another thing is after you take time to process it. Take time to prepare yourself. Take time to prepare yourself. 
You take as much time as you need. But take some time to prepare yourself. What do you mean prepare yourself? You need to take time to prepare yourself for what's next in your life. Because you can't stay in this moment. You can't stay in this moment. You can't stay in a moment of grief. Because if you stay in that moment of grief, that moment of grief will become a mainstay of grief in your life. You'll, you'll be grieving forever. You'll be grieving forever. You need to take time to prepare for what's next. What's next in your life? When Jesus heard the news, he departed in the ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. Jesus didn't stay in that same moment. That moment of grief that he was experiencing. He didn't stay there. He went, took some time apart. I believe he prayed while he was there. He processed what was happening. And he prepared himself for what was next in his life. Take time to prepare yourself for what's next. Prepare for what's next. If you have to, uh, uh, remember when when Moses, when Moses was was getting ready to to be taken away, and 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 he, you know, he was talking to Joshua and him, and he showed him the promised land, and God took Moses. Said the people, the people wept for him for a little while. But then God came to Joshua and he said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, rise <laughs> and get up over this Jordan. Come on, get the people to the promised land. You can't stay there grieving. You have to get up and prepare yourself for the promised land that God has for you. You have to prepare yourself for what's next for you because God has something greater in store for you. God has something greater in store for you. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? God has something greater in store for you. Yeah, you may have experienced loss, but that's all right. I know it, I know it hurts. I know it may be painful, but God has something great in store for you. Don't sit there and stay there. In the moment of grief. Don't make that. That moment. Don't make it a mainstay in your life. Don't make it a mainstay in your life. Pray about it. Take time for yourself. Pray about it. Process it. And then prepare for what's next. Because this is not the end. This is not the end. I believe what the, what the old hymn used to say. This too shall pass. 
this is not the end. This too shall pass. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. So tonight, I pray for all of us who may be experiencing grief in our lives. Father, I pray now that you help us give us the strength God to keep moving forward pick us up God where we may have been been broken down build us up God strengthen us where we're weak help us God to process whatever it is that that we may have lost or we may have be dealing with help us to process it God to know that you are still God that you're the same good God today that you were yesterday and help us to prepare ourselves you have in store for us. Father, we thank you today. Oh, we bless your name right now, Father. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for doing it now. God, I thank you right now. For strengthening your people. Strengthening your people, God. Thank you, God, that even right now, God, that hearts begin to be lifted, spirits begin to be lifted, God. Minds, God, be, be given peace and joy, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for doing it now. I thank you for doing it now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for being that strong tower. Thank you for being that refuge and that rock. God, we love you today. And we bless your name for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, my brother and my sister, if you're there today, maybe you've never accepted Jesus into your heart don't know him as Lord of your life. Today would be a good day if you accept him into your heart. He wants to come in and be Lord, but he will not force his way into your life. You have to invite him into your heart today. Maybe you're there and you say, I know Jesus, but I'm backslidden. I need to renew my fellowship with him. I want you to know that God said he's married to the backslider. And he's still here waiting for you to return so that he may return you back to your rightful place in him. Maybe you are part of a ministry, you're part of a church, and you don't feel like that church is changing your life. And I say if your church is not changing you, you better change your church. Or maybe you just want to make sure your soul is safe today. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you now just as I am. I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. I confess all my sins to you right now. And I ask you to wash me with the blood of Jesus. I confess Jesus as Lord of my life. And I believe in my heart that he is your son. And that you raised him from the dead. And he is now sitting on your right hand side interceding for me. Lord Jesus come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Lead me and guide me. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus name. Amen. Listen if you prayed that prayer. I want you to know that you are saved. And what you need to do now is you need to find yourself a Bible-based ministry, a place where the Word of God is being taught, 
And I believe New Home Ministries is such a place. If you would like to be a part of New Home Ministries here in Hammond, why don't you meet us, 1300 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive in Hammond, Louisiana, this Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Come on and be a part of us. Or maybe you say, I'm nowhere near Hammond, but I still feel God leading me to be a part of this ministry. Email us your contact information to that email address that's on the screen, and one of our elders and ministers will reach out to you and welcome you to be a part of our cyber ministry. Amen. So do that, and they'll contact you. Uh, But uh, for right now, those of you who have accepted Jesus into your heart, and those of you who are going to become members, uh, and you feel like God is leading you to be a part of New Home Ministry, let me be the first one to say, welcome to the family. God bless you. Know that we love you with the love of Christ. And we pray God's blessings and favor just be over your life. Amen. So God bless your hearts. And again, welcome to the family on today. Be blessed. Amen. Now, let's prepare to bless God today with our ministry of giving. Amen. This is our time uh, where we can sow back into the kingdom of God. There's some of you who would like to honor God with your tithes on today. If you feel like uh, this ministry has been a blessing into your life and and you've been spiritually fed here, um, now is the time where you can sow your tithes uh, into this ministry. Uh, but but then there's some may, maybe some of you who would like to just bless God with a liberal and a cheerful offering. Maybe some of you have a need and you want to sow a seed for God to meet that need. Now is the time for you to do that, amen. But this, again, is only for those that are willing, able, and trusting and believing God, amen, that he would do everything that his word says that he would do, amen. Uh, So if you want to do that today, you can look across the screen. There are multiple ways where you can do that. Choose one of those tools, uh, Givelify, Cash App, uh, the website, or you can mail it to the physical address that's on the screen. But whatever you do, don't miss this opportunity for you to sow back into the kingdom of God. Amen. Through your ministry of giving. God said he loves a cheerful giver and the liberal soul shall be made fat. Amen. So let's bless God uh, on today. Uh, As we prepare to give, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us with this time, this opportunity to sow back into your kingdom. Father, as we give, we give believing and trusting you that you would do everything that your word says that you would do. Father, I pray for those who gave. I pray for those who could not give but had the desire to give. I pray that you bless them, God, that the next time that they'll be able to sow double. And I thank you, Father, meeting every need, blessing with the desires of hearts. I thank you that there'll be no lack in their life but increase and overflow. In the name of Jesus. Father, we love you, we honor you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, God bless you, and thank you for sowing into New Home Ministries, a place that we know is good, fertile ground. Amen. So God bless your hearts, and we pray God's blessings and faith on your life. And again, thank you so much. Hello family, I pray today's message will make a huge impact on your life on today. But now it's time to sow a seed into Pastor McKay's life. You can use one of the given means listed on the page. I know when you sow into his life, you are sowing into good ground and your life will be blessed. Well family, I thank God for you being here today. I pray you were blessed by the word. But I'm always blessed with you being here with us, fellowshipping with us. I want to invite you to join us. This upcoming Sunday, amen, uh, uh, Sunday morning worship service, uh, worship experience here online at 11.30 a.m. Remember, we get started at 8.30 with Bishop R.C. Blakes Jr., 9.30 with Bishop Henry Bolden, 10.30 with Bishop Sam Blakes, and yours truly at 11.30 a.m. here on New Home TV. But join us this Sunday for our in-person service. We're in person this upcoming Sunday at 10.30 a.m., 1300 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive in Hammond, Louisiana. Why don't you come on and be a part of us and fellowship with us? I promise you, uh, you will be blessed. Amen. Uh, And you will have uh, an amazing, an amazing experience uh, at our 
worship experience this upcoming Sunday. So why don't you come on and bring your family and be a part of us. Amen. God bless your hearts. Listen, follow me on our social media platforms that's on the screen. Uh, keep it locked right here coming up next at 7 o'clock. It's my big brother, Bishop Samuel R. Blakes, with a powerful word that I know will be a blessing uh, in your life. Amen. So thank you so very much for being here. Please know that I love you with the love of Christ. And there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Not even if you tried. So don't even waste your time. You can't stop me. Remember this, where there is much prayer, there is much power. Where there is little prayer, there is little power. Where there is no prayer, there is nothing. So stay prayerful, people of God. Go with God and let God go with you. Until next time, may God bless, keep, and favor your life. May God bless y'all. I love you today. Be blessed.